Well, we tried to do it, but I left. I left the Burns written in the my car. This is Amy's car. So uh, we had a bite to eat and decided I'm just going to do the burn. I'm just going to do the horses. Two year olds, three year olds, four year olds, five year olds. You guys know how it went last time. Not a lot. Uh, not a lot going on. Um, not a lot going on this week. We focused on the race horses who've been racing great. Who've been racing great. But the babies again. A little early to bring you a list of babies. We have forty some babies. They're all broke for the most part. The couple of the Ontario breads are coming out of the field as we're jostling for stalls in Ontario, uh, and we'll continue to jostle for stalls. What's wrong? What's that? Yeah, it's, it's just like yeah, it's one of those dumb calls. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, we continue to look for um, to get our stalls ready in Ontario for the horses. So we have some two-year-olds going out, like Hasty Bid, James's horse left, another horse left. Um, who we have leave last week? Cunning Connie left. That was two weeks ago. Do we have anybody? And then this week, after oh, the Breeders' Crown, fish. next week after the Breeders' Crown final, hopefully we'll have three more to go out. Uh, five fish species went out last week. So just this time of year, we're jostling everything around. We have horses to come home. Uh, World for Two is going to come home. Procrastinator is going to come home. Um, and even getting horses to Northfield Park. We have some horses at Tim's right now that are waiting for uh, waiting for some more stalls at Northfield Park. So a lot more than actual usual than usually going on here in the fall for the stable. We're busy enough as it is, but you added this, this uh, Rubik's Cube of horses and it, it becomes a little more tricky but uh, nothing we can we still have the spillover at, at Tomiko I'm not worried about Tomiko until the snow starts falling until the temperatures start dropping that was always my concern was that Tomiko is a great place to break, break our babies but uh, Harry doesn't want to be breaking babies anymore I don't blame him I'm there tomorrow I'm going to go with Lonely Lakewood who now is in Ontario if you're one of my partners on Lonely Lakewood that horse is originally we're getting him gelded uh, we're getting him castrated, so we're, him and Nothing But a Dreamer are both originlings. Harry's asked me to, to castrate uh, Nothing But a Dreamer, so we'll send both of them up and get them done. Now, I'm there tomorrow. I might slide down to Tomiko tomorrow morning and go with Lonely Lakewood myself, but Harry doesn't want to, and I don't blame him. You know, Harry's not a spring chicken. That's not to say he's old, but last thing you want to see is Harry getting hurt. Um, I like going with them, so I'll go with Lonely Lakewood tomorrow. So... Uh, now that you know where we're at, let's start with the two-year-olds. We've had a fantastic season with the two-year-olds. Can only hope that we keep it going into 2023 uh, with the sophomores of this year, the two-year-olds turning three, and our new horses next year. We've, we've got a great lineup so far. Really, really pleased with what we've got. A uh, little something new for you this year with the Pacers. We got some power in the Pacer division. Before, it was always the Victor Cruises or a couple of horses that might be or could be, but and that's not true. I guess we had a couple of betting, uh, a couple of uh, betters delights. Here's your tabby, sweetheart. I'll open it for you. We had a couple of betters delights that we had hopes for, but none of the power ranks that we've had in the trotters where, you know, we just had a ton of horses and surely some of them are good. Here, take that, you turkey. Surely some of them are good uh, and then that we had a great year with them. This is a little deeper, a little deeper crew of pesos than we're, than we're used to. So we're going to start with the two-year-olds. Now for the yearlings. We're going to start with the two-year-olds right now. Absolute euphoria. I trained. So for Ken, Brent, Kyle, I trained absolute euphoria in 210 in the jog cart the other day. She's still three, four weeks. Get her sea legs underneath her, so to speak. But, man, I was happy with what I saw. Not on a line, not running in, not scrambly. Exactly what we wanted to see when we turned her out from when we brought her back in. Uh, anchors up. We had him castrated. That right foot bothers him a little. Left hind. He's got to grow up. got to fill out. We're trying to get him trained down properly. I'm looking at him. He still is quite immature. So we're going to try and get him trained down. I trained him in 32 or something the other day. I thought he looked good. Long way to go for this guy yet. He's not going to be ready in the next week or two. I can tell you that. Um, where are we at next? Uh, Austral Hanover will be coming back December 1st. That's our next problem. Now when we get all the stalls and Stutzman's and first line figured out, we get Harry up there and we get everybody, you know, uh, as snug as a bug, so to speak, in the rug. We gotta find more stalls to get some of these horses back. Now, Austral Hanover will come to Ohio, but between December and January, we still have some of our stalls we're supposed to get filled up with horses of Rosie's. So we'll quickly go from like 52 to 72, like that, 
in Ohio. So we got to be ready for that uh, manpower wise. But for now, Jason's got his side. So I, I need to clarify this also. I know that a lot of people, and Jason was a little concerned too. Like Jason is a super, super meticulous guy. I love the way he operates. We got a great rapport and a great relationship together. But Jason doesn't want to have 50 horses. And he doesn't really love doing babies. He had great luck with his baby last year. And I'm sure he's the type of guy that wants to keep some racehorses and a couple of young horses around where we want to keep a lot of young horses around and some racehorses around. Hey, I'm doing a video here, Turkey. Hey, look, can you get that working for her, honey? Thank you. So, um, Jason's side is going to be all our racehorses and horses coming back. I am going to be a little more full-time in Ohio. It's going to be a little more stressful on us, but I like the fact that the kids and Amy, on Fridays after school, for now, we can go over to Ohio and spend the weekend there. We can get the babies trained on those days when I'm there. I also go over on Wednesdays. We'll have horses to race on Wednesday night. If we have one or so in Wednesday afternoon at the Meadows, it's okay. It just means that my Tuesday night late, like 8.30 at night when the kids go to bed, I go to Northfield Park. I get there around 12.30 or so. Uh, so maybe put the new Wi-Fi on because my Wi-Fi is on. Um, Okay, so I, I will deal with it in a second. Just try and get it to see what to see what uh, see what Wi-Fi is on. Let me go to settings. And see what Wi-Fi is on. So um, get to Northfield Park at night. Get up in the morning and do the do the work in the morning at Northfield Park. Uh, do the work in the morning at Northfield Park, and then go to the Meadows if we have to race in the afternoon and race at Northfield at night. I know that's a pretty deep Wednesday for me. Thursday again, maybe do some of the babies over here because in Ontario, you know, we'll have James and Danny who will be in charge of the babies in Ontario. Those will be, those people will be, you know, reporting to me, so to speak. And I love the fact that James come back with us again this year, even though he didn't have to. We'll have a, hey, Ava's not annoying you, little girl. You be nice. It's starting. You shouldn't say thank you to Ava for getting her to work. Is it working? Is it working? Plug in my charger. Yeah. So, um, Wednesdays and a Thursday morning will be a little busy for me. Uh, we'll get back. I'll get back home Thursday in the afternoon sometime for the most part. And then, if everything goes smoothly, the weekends will be spent in Ohio with Amy and the kids. Yes, it's traveling, but at the same time, um, I, you know, our kids, even though they're young, you know, we're very, very fortunate. In the fact, one, they travel well. And two, they understand what we're trying to do. And that's very hard to explain is that we have these two giant stables that we're trying to juggle. And I'm sure this won't go on forever with them being okay with it. But for now, uh, it, it makes things at least tolerable until we can figure out the best plan moving forward. So we are, I guess, rather than be full-time anywhere, we're part-time in both places. Full-time family, part-time Ontario, part-time Ohio. And that's kind of how it's going to go for now. Okay, get off track. Austral Hanover will be coming back uh, around December 1st, around my birthday. A lot of these horses will be coming in. Brace for Landing will be racing in November, so you won't see him. He's going to get a short break. Probably be back around Christmas time, I suspect. Now, this week, Adeline, one second, please. This week, what are you doing? Are you crazy? I can see you in the video. Uh, it is working, I think. Did you get it to work? She says something. Your hotspot's My hotspot's not on? Is yours on? My phone connected to your hotspot. Well, why don't you put your hotspot on? That'll work. Um, brace for landing. So the plan for brace for landing, a lot of people asking me, and quite frankly, I was asking also. I would, in a perfect world, have one start leading up to the kindergarten fourth leg, and I had somebody say to me the other day, well, we should just maybe supplement into the, into the matron like we did last year. Ah, no, we won't be doing that. There's no need for that, to be honest, especially after what I saw last year, a seven-horse field. It's not like Brace for Landing is Crantini yet, right? Or is any of those any of those three top, very experienced, very smart Colts, he's still learning. So, fourth leg of the kindergarten. If he gets in the consolation, great. If he doesn't, and we still think that he's improving, then we will aim him towards the matron, or towards the, the Valley Victory. That's the plan for Brace for Landing. Carter Michael Deal will race in the Breeders' Crown Elimination on Friday night. Yes, he doesn't have a race in five weeks, but he is plenty tight. I can assure you of that. So we'll see how he races moving forward into uh, 
into um, just wait one second I can do it into the fall uh, Cash Deals is back going now she looks great she, the time off really really helped her I think she's going to be a real asset in 2023 for us as a Philly that qualified won a qualifier in 2-1 I believe but then had some weird ligament that was kind of bothering her and dogging her a little bit um, and we ended up turning her out she came back and looks like a million bucks right now Columbus is out in the field Coupe de Ville is going out to the field I believe after next week or the 28th one or the other uh, soon crantini has got the Breeders' Crown left, and then that's it for him. Um, Cunning Connie is out in the field right now, as is Cutie Cumber. Um, Cutie Cumber will be back in late November. Cunning Connie, I suspect, will come back in December 1st-ish, somewhere around there. Five Fish Species went out in the field this week. Uh, she showed a little bit of, quite a bit of mucus and was sick. And, you know, when you weigh your options and say, what are we cleaning her up for? She's already tried it 57 twice. Is there any need to clean this filly up to get her in to go for some reason? No. Let her grow up, turn her out in the field, and let her relax. She'll come back in, uh, what is it, October, October, around the first part of December. She'll be back in also. Uh, full heart, now out in the field full time. She'll be back in with the rest of them on December 1st. Game, set, match, I think, is going to come to Ontario. That's what I want to do. Remind me to message Dr. Latessa and ask her to pull Coggins on that horse and rush them tomorrow. Um, Gandalf the Black will be coming in this week also. Uh, we'll get him back going. High Enterprise will be coming back in December 1st. She'll be coming in with Horn Player December 1st. Uh, Lady All-Star, a lot of people asking, hey, what happened? Well, you guys saw it. You saw what happened, right? She just wasn't herself. Scope drafter, full of mucus. We'll get her back on track very, very soon. Um, we're likely going to race her this Friday coming up. She's on antibiotics, running fluids, so her, her white count did not come back super high. So it's not something we shouldn't be able to uh, help and fix by this coming Friday. Landing pad out in the field. He'll remain out till December 1st. Landing strip. Um, again, same trajectory as brace for landing. In fact, the exact same. Fourth leg of the kindergarten, hopefully consolation. And then the, potentially the Valley Victory. Now before all that... We'd like to get them a race leading into November 5th. We have time. We'll see if we can get them in this coming week. Um, leaps and bounds out till December 1st. Also, Merchant Man probably racing two or three more times. I'd love to get a two-year-old mark on him, and then he'll go out to the field. Uh, Mopower Baby is out till December 1st. Mopower, more than you know, out till December 1st. My 1% back now in jogging, training. Amy trained him the other day with me. Made a little break without the hobbles on, but I thought he looked really good. Otherwise, nothing but a dreamer. He's still jogging a bit because we're waiting to get an appointment to have him castrated. And then when that cleans up good, then he'll go out to the field. We'll have him back in mid-December, I think. Uh, oh my gosh, December 1st also. Rita Legacy is still training. I trained her at 13 last week, but she's still another three, four weeks away yet, that filly. Um... Silent Assassin is in now. She's in Tim's barn right now with a... Uh, he should be coming back to Northfield Park as soon as we can get her in a stall uh, at Northfield Park. Sipping on my shines back training now. I trained him the other day. Thought he trained pretty good. He's got a ways to go, but I thought he trained all right. Sir Strong is out in the field till December 1st. Sister Solange, December 1st also. Smoking Hot Irish Girl will race next Saturday in the Buckeye Final, in which case she'll be out in the field right after that. Spitfire Overseas punched his ticket to the Breeders' Crown Elimination on Friday. That's when he'll race. Swing. I know. Yeah, the way it goes. Um, Spitfire Overseas, we just talked about him, swinging, swinging, swinging Senorita, is out in the field till December 1st also. Tactical Mounts, similar trajectory as the Colts, although she is not eligible to that Valley Victory. What's the one? Goldsmith Mage, not eligible at Fourth Elimination, Consolation, or, and then, out to the field with her. She's finished off the year strong. I'd love to see her get a real strong two-year-old mark. She had a really nice filly. Uh, Tailgate Buzz, December 1st to be back in. War Yuri is back in now jogging. What a mission in the field now. We'll bring him back mid-December for that guy. Uh, wouldn't it be nice school the other day? 202. She'll qualify soon and then be racing on the B tracks. Then we'll see what she's made up. She was stretched out the other day. They went in 57 or 58 in front of her. I hate seeing that, but schoolers suck at, at Mohawk this time of year. They're usually aged horses in there. It's so different than Ohio, Pennsylvania. They never have schoolers. Here at Mohawk, we have a full slate of schoolers all the time and they roll along. So um, she'll qualify this week. I'd like to see her go in 2 1, but I'd like to get it, have her see have her get in with horses that are going to go into one. So that is 
all the two-year-olds. I'll be back in just a minute with the three-year-olds. <laughs> 